guys! So today I have a special guest on the channel. You guys know him as JP, aka my boyfriend of the last four years. So today Justin decided that he would set out some advice into the world on how he and I keep our relationship so strong. This advice can be any gender. Interpreted openly. Always. Whatever you want. This isn't directed at just the men in the world, and this isn't just directed at just the females of the relationship. This is just about the relationship. Let's talk. <laughs> we are here to talk about relationship advice. From me. Startling, I know. Just because some people are bad at relationships, actually a lot of people are bad at relationships, this doesn't mean that you can't be friends with them or they're bad people. Some people are just not good at relationships. So I did really want to go over that. Maybe they just haven't found the right person to be in a relationship with that makes them want to go the extra mile. That doesn't mean that you have to cut them out of your lives or you only have to be friends with one person if they break up. If that person isn't good to his girlfriend or she's not good to their boyfriend, in the end of the day that's just none of our business. If their relationship's toxic then they need to end it and that's their problem. That's not, that's not your problem, that's not my problem. I'm in a healthy relationship, so that's the only relationship I worry about. That being said, here is some advice on how to be in a healthy relationship. This isn't a be-all, end-all, this is going to make your relationship stronger if you do all these things, because all of this advice that I'm going to give you has to be reciprocated. Your significant other has to notice you doing these things and appreciate it, or else it's, it's a toxic relationship all over again. The first thing I wanted to touch on is that you don't own your significant other. You don't get to tell them what to do. You don't get to tell them who they can and can't be friends with. You don't get to tell them where they're going that night. If you are nervous about your significant other going to the bar and doing something dumb, then go with them and have a good time with them. Don't go with them to babysit them. Go with them because you want to have fun with them. That's what we've always done is if there's a show, if there's anything going on, we go together because we like hanging out together. And all of our friends are kind of synonymous, you know. We all get along really well. And that's kind of a big stage right there, is accepting their friends. But you really have to appreciate the people that they do hang out with. Because if they make them happy, that means they're not going to be as stressed out. That means you're not going to be as stressed out. If you don't let them hang out with their friends ever, they're going to be bitchy. They're going to be jumping down your throat for everything. The next thing is kind of the opposite of that. Something that a lot of people really, really, really need to realize is that you don't owe them anything. You're a team, okay? That means balance. If you feel that your relationship is toxic and you've tried to talk to them about the things that make you upset or piss you off and they, they can't seem to change any of those things, so you need to, to leave because there's only so many times you can have the conversation and there's only so many times that they can say, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. And if they don't change the first time, maybe the second time, then they're not going to. Move on, get over with it, and find someone that makes you happy. In the end of the day, that's it. Relationships are one of those things that you're allowed to be selfish about. You're allowed to say, I don't like this, I'm going to leave. And that's 100% that's acceptable. If you scream or yell at your significant other, you're not meant for each other. I absolutely love my girlfriend, and I could not for a second imagine screaming at her, calling her names, yelling anything at her other than the words to an awesome song. That's it. If you're yelling at someone, you're abusing them. If they're yelling back, then they are reciprocating the abuse. That's not a healthy relationship. If you yell at each other once a year, you know what, okay, maybe you just had a bad day. If you yell at each other once a week, once a day, once a month, that's, that's not healthy. Not only is it not healthy, but it's useless. It has zero point. When someone's yelling at you, you're not listening. When you're yelling at someone else, they're not listening. There's, there's no conversation to be had when two people are yelling at each other. Nobody's listening to anyone. Nobody's absorbing anything. You're going to wake up the next day and think, wow, I just screamed shit that happened five years ago at someone that I tell I love them every day. That's... Where the fuck does that come from? You stop yelling for a second and talk to your significant other about why you're upset or when they talk to you about why they're upset, your feelings are going to be hurt or their feelings are going to be hurt. That's a natural instinct. You do not need to act irrationally. Corey tells me, when you did this, I was a little bit upset. I don't like it when you do that. It took her a little while to kind of get used 
to my responses because usually I'm pretty quiet for sometimes up to an hour or two hours after she tells me something like that. I don't respond right away. And she's like, are you, are you really mad? You know, are you freaking out? Because I never respond in the moment. My natural instincts is defense. That's because that's just who we are. And when you defend yourself, they become offensive. So it's an offense and a defense. And then you're arguing and you're screaming. So when someone tells you something like that, go for a walk. Go lay down, leave for 15, 25 minutes. Do not respond when you're upset or angry. It's not the real you talking. You need to calm down and just wait a few minutes, okay? Just fucking wait a few minutes before you say anything to them. So in that time that you're reflecting and you're calming down, do something that you like to do that makes you happy. Because then when you go and talk to them a half an hour later, you're not going to be that angry, upset, shaking person. You're going to be the regular you and you're going to say, you know what, I'm very sorry that that upset you. I'm going to try my best to not do that in the, in the future. And if it's something that's a really, really big part of your life that you do all the time, that you love doing, that they're asking you not to do, then you're not meant for that person. This goes back to the beginning of respecting yourself enough. But if it's something small and minuscule that doesn't really affect your day-to-day -day life that they just don't really like, then, then stop doing it or stop doing it in front of them. You know, do it with your friends or whatever. People don't have to like every single thing about each other to be in a strong, healthy relationship. And that's kind of my next point, is that your interests don't have to be their interests and theirs don't have to be yours. Lori absolutely loves old 80s hair metal, Led Zeppelin, Mal I don't know if she likes Molly Crew. Yeah. Probably not. Anyway, Led Zeppelin, Guns N' Roses, Alice Cooper, all that 80s hair metal stuff, she absolutely fucking loves it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I'm not a hair metal guy. I'm not a glam guy. Not into it. I like punk rock. Yes, she loves punk rock. Do I tell her that she's not allowed to like 80s hair metal because I don't like it? Absolutely not. Does she make me listen to it all day every day because she likes it? No. That's just something that she likes that I don't. That's it. That's fine. You're allowed to have differences. I've seen this way too many times where someone starts dating someone else and that person all of a sudden next week is this crazy punk rocker loves punk rock. No, that's not how it works. They don't have to change into you. You don't have to change into them. You're allowed to just be you. So my next point is kind of the opposite of my last point. I think I'm gonna do that a few times throughout this video. Opposites don't attract. Not forever anyways. <laughs> so my advice to you is try and find someone that has similar interests. Corey and I met at punk rock shows because we both love going and seeing live music. Any weekend ever, we can say, let's go see this band and we're on board. If I was dating someone that hated going to shows, it kind of starts creating jealousy. Every weekend I'm going to shows, leaving my girlfriend at home. It's okay to do that once in a while, to go out with your friends and have a good time. Every weekend, if you split up and go get drunk with different people, it's not going to work. That's a big thing. If you're constantly at each other's throats about who they're hanging out with, who you want to hang out with. We hung out with your friends last weekend, so we have to hang out with my friends this weekend. You had fun two days ago, so now it's my turn to have fun. Why can't you both have fun at the same time? That's the only real reason I have for saying opposites don't really attract, is that I've seen it before where people just have to pick who gets to have fun that weekend. That's not fair. If you both can't have fun hanging out together, hanging out with your friends, then you're wasting your time. When your significant other is talking, listen to them, okay? And if you zone out for a second, or you glance at the TV and you get all caught up and they're still talking and you don't quite hear them, just tell them, okay? Don't pretend to hear them. And then later when they're like, I told you that 20 minutes ago, you say, no you didn't, and then you start arguing. Just listen to them. And if you're not listening to them, just say, hang on a second, I'm really focused on this. I'll talk to you in one second. Or pause whatever's distracting you so you can listen to them, respond to what they're saying, and then move on. If you don't listen and communicate, then you have no idea what's going on in the other person's head and you can't cater to them the way that someone in a relationship needs to be catered to. Something big that goes along with listening to them is talking to them. When they come home and say, how was your day? They're not looking for a, no oh, good. It took me a really, really long time to actually realize that. A lot of people always used to ask me, you know, how was work, how was this? And I'd say, yeah, I was good. And I always kind of thought, what do they care anyway? They do care. That's why they're asking you. That's why they're dating you, is because they want you to talk to them about how your fucking day was, or how work was, or how hanging out with your best friend was. 
If they ask you that question, then they want to know. They want to know an answer. When you ask them, you need to be interested as well. I guess the last thing I really want to talk about, it's something that I brought up a few times throughout the video, is that the main factor in a healthy, happy relationship is that you genuinely have to like each other. When you get home, you have to be excited to see them. When they get home, they have to be excited to see you. That's just the way that it is. If you don't like each other, it doesn't matter how much you love each other. You're wasting your life. You have to have healthy, happy conversations. And I guess so, in the end, it's, it's about you. Does them being happy make you happy? If the answer is yes, then you need to find out a way to make them happy. If their happiness doesn't really affect you that much, then you're with the wrong person. Have you ever heard the, the saying, happy wife, happy life? I hear that saying way too fucking often. The only reason I hear that too often is because people don't really know what it means. To me, my happiness is so connected and so tied in to her happiness that if she's not happy, then I'm not happy. It's, it's not a one-way street. She doesn't scream at me when she's upset about work. She doesn't scream at me when she's hungry. She asks me to help her, and I ask her for help when I'm having a bad day. Everything about it is teamwork. If you're not a good team, then you're not a good relationship. We've been best friends for four years now because of that. So I guess that's all I had to say. Take it with a grain of salt. That's not a be all, end of it all, healthy relationship if you do all that stuff. That's my advice. That's what I do. That's what Corey does. It works for us. Do whatever works for you. If you find something that works for your relationship, then just do it. And if your relationship just isn't working, you don't owe anyone anything. Take care. See you later.